Now, what I'm going to be doing on this uh, demonstration, it's uh, how to set up virtual machines. I want you to pay attention to every detail of what I'm going to be doing now, because it might just be your ticket for tomorrow test. Now, on your screen, you don't actually have a virtual machine yet. Blank. Is that not correct? Okay. Now, let's say, for example, you were asked to set up two computer systems, Windows XP and Windows 7. Now, we all know that uh, one of the unique ways about Windows 7 was that Windows 7 used IDE drives. Is that not correct? Uh, Windows XP used IDE drives, right? And Windows 7 were unique with SATA. Is that not correct? So you've been asked to set up a Windows 7 computer, for example. And you have been instructed to make sure these computers have these following configurations. And those configurations, I'm going to go with you right now. Though you may be asked different type of configuration at any given time, but you want to, be, you want to make sure that you know how to get this configuration right. Are we together? So let's have our first task, uh, the company asked us to do, was to set up a Windows XP computer, which probably we need to buy at the shop, get a desktop, get the, the, the ATS casing, the power supply, the motherboard, the RAM, the keyboard, and do all the necessary hardware uh, purchasing, couple the computers together, or we were specifically asked to get this, uh, a peculiar spec of, the part uh, of that particular system. Now, how do you go about doing that? Let's say, for example, we're asked to create a Windows XP virtual machine because a virtual machine is a virtual computer. Are we together? So the first step you would do is to come here and click on the new button. So I want you to click on the new button. A wizard comes up, right? It says name and operating what? System. Now, normally, every computer usually have a name, right? Now, name are usually attributed to the manufacturer. Is that not correct? You have Dell, ASO, and, you know. But let's say, for example, this class, uh, let's say, for example, in this, particular, uh, in this particular scenario, you were asked to give a name of the Windows uh, computer system as sales department. Let's say this is a particular department that actually uses uh, Windows XP because of the program they work. So that's why you go to some companies, you have a tag on the system. Huh? It says sales department, purchasing department, and things like that. They put those stats for them to be able to identify not just the computer, but what type of programs that is installed on that computer and the operating system, the hard drive, or even the specification of that computer. That's why some of your computer comes with the modern number. Is that not correct? So let's say, for example, in this case, we're using sales department, D-E-P-T, just a short so we're asked to give a Windows XP computer. So I'll come to my type, and I'll select Windows. Now, we all know that Windows XP version actually also improved as well after Windows Vista was introduced and Windows XP, uh, Windows 7 with 64 bits. Now we have XP with 64 bits. Are we together? So let's say you were asked to make sure the computer is the 64 bits. But now, in the case of this scenario, you may be asked to ensure that the, the, the version of the virtual machine you're creating matches with the version of your computer system because that will tell about your infrastructure. So let's say currently my computer is actually 32 bits. So I will come to the drop down list here and I will say what? 32 bits. Are we together? But if my host computer is a 64 bits, I will come here and say what? 64 bits. So in this case, I'm going, I will go with 64 bits because my computer is what? It's 64 bits. I don't know for you. Yours may be 32 or 64. Yeah, I don't have so you can go for 32 bits. So the next step now is to click continue. Yes. Uh, yours will be next. Now, normally, whenever you're creating a virtual machine, it usually gives you the default RAM of the type of operating system you're trying to create. But in this case, you have been asked specifically that this is the RAM the computer should have. If it doesn't work, if it does not fall under the, specific, uh, the default recommended RAM here, you will not need to put that particular RAM that you've been asked to do. So in this case, I'll come in here and type 
Let's say I was asked to put uh, 256. So I'll type here 256. So 256 will be the RAM I'll be using based on the spec given to me by the organization. Are we together? The next step is to click continue or next, whichever, since next is what is on your, on your computer. Now, it says hard drive. Are we together? Now we've set the computer, we've set the RAM, now it's what? The hard drive. Now, normally, it will come to the default, create a new virtual what? Hard drive. If already you have a virtual hard drive already, uh, on your computer before, you can say use existing, meaning you're actually upgrading a computer from an old one to a new one. So you're just removing the hard drive from the old computer, you're putting it on the new one. But in this case, this is a whole new computer. So we want to go with the default, right? Create a new hard drive. Now, if you notice there, it says the recommended size is what? 10 gig. 10 gig. Are we together? So click Create. Now, it's going to ask you here, what type of virtual hard drive? Are you getting me? Now, normally, by default, virtual box comes with different types of formats. Like, for example, the VDI, it's unique to virtual box program. VMDK is unique to VMware. VMware program or VMware virtual manager uses what? That particular version for your virtual hard drive. Meaning, I can create a VM, VMDK virtual hard drive, take it from this computer, go to a VMware computer, and I'll be able to put the virtual hard drive in that computer and it will work. VHD is unique to Windows. Microsoft Hyper-V, which is a virtual machine program for Microsoft, uses VHD. But in this case, since we're working with virtual box, we we'll just go with the default VDI. So let's click on next or continue. Now, anybody know about, does anybody know the difference between fixed and dynamic disk? Yeah, what is dynamic expand? What does it mean? Now, fixed uh, dynamic allocated means that if I'm going to be allocating 10 gig, for example, which is recommended, then what will come to my computer when I install will only be the size that is currently being used, which is the operating system size. So if the size consumed by the operating system is just 2 gig, I will only see 2 gig on my computer. As I copy, it will expand to 3. As I, co as I save more content, install more content, it keeps expanding. That's what's dynamically what allocated. Now, if you say fixed, it gives you everything. That is why it makes it makes the size more afford. It, it, it opens the door for unnecessary components to be stored on your computer. It's not about bit by bit by bit. So when you store, you expand. When you store, you expand. When you store, you expand. But with fix, it gives you the full allocation of the entire size, which is 10 gig. Are you getting me? So we'll take fixed. So let's take fixed. If you also read it here, it also says exactly the same thing as well. So we'll click on fixed and we'll click continue. So um, naturally, the computer will want you to give a name to the virtual hard drive as well and the location where you want to store it. Now, normally, virtual box have its default location, which I've, I've showed you guys from the yesterday. Where if you go to that URL, the folder where your computer, your name, virtual box, that's where all the virtual machine we create will be stored. But in this case, I'm going to leave the default. I'm not going to change the location. Now, did you see that it says 10 gig? Did you see that? So what I'm going to be doing now, maybe I've been asked to create a specific size. Let's say I was asked to create 5 gig, for example, or 2 gig, or 3 gig. So let's say I was asked to create 3 gig. So I'll come in here and put 3 gig. Are we together? I'm, I'm reducing the gig because of time. Huh? Because if we have to create 10 gig or 5 gig, it will, quite, it will take a longer time. So I'm just using that. So now the next step is to what? Create. The computer will be created in less than few seconds. Yeah, because with a smaller size, it will, make, it will go much faster so that I just demonstrate how this thing works. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can, I can show you that later on. I'll show you that. Don't worry. Before we leave, we'll delete it. Before we leave, we're going to delete. Okay. Now, the other thing is, 
Is your virtual machine created? I told you guys, when we start the virtual machine practicals, we will know who is having a computer and who is having a machine. <laughs> Yes, I said there are com there are computers and there are machines. The machines they don't take time. The computers they waste our time. But let's be patient. Okay, are we done? Yes. Who's still waiting? Nobody. You're still waiting. It's three gig, huh? Show you selected three gig. Huh? So that's because we're just using it for demonstration. Is it done? Yeah. Okay, guys. Now, if you look at your computer right now on sales department, did you see a normal configuration of a computer there? Yeah. Everything is there, right? Yeah. If you look at the general tab, the name of the computer and the operating system type, right? If you go to system, it says your base memory. You see your boot order as well. Yeah. Acceleration, your virtual machine, which you're using, right? If you go to your video memory, it says six megabytes, 16 megabytes. Yes. Okay, the rest of them are disabled. You can leave that. Those are just additional features. Now, did you see the, the drive it took? What did it, what did it take? An IDE. Instead of what? SATA. Instead of a SATA. It took an IDE instead of a SATA because we were creating a Windows XP. If we try to create Windows 7, it's going to take a SATA. Are we together? That works with it. It, it. Remember, it's an emulation program. Mm. It tries to emulate the physical. Mm. So that's your audio as well. Did you see your network adapters as well? It also have a network adapter. Yeah. But now, we have just set up the machine, but we, you were given a requirement. Mm. You were asked to install three network adapters. And these three network adapters should be able to communicate outside. One of them should only be able to communicate within the virtual machine environment. Why two network adapters should be able to communicate to the external network? That's number one. Number two, take notes. Number one, that's number one. Number two, you were asked to configure the boot order. That the network should be the first boot. The DVD should be the second boot. The hard drive should be the third boot. These are the only boot devices you should have. Number four, you were asked to add additional hard drives. Like, they were asked to add a SATA and IDE. And they also mentioned that make sure one of the SATA drive is a solid state drive as well. After that, you were also asked to do other configurations, which I'm going to explain now. So let's say let's go with the first option. The first option is to configure the network adapters. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. So what you need to do, you click on the virtual machine, which is sales department. Mm -hmm. Did you see settings? Mm -hmm. Click on settings. Did you see set the sales department on the top? Mm -hmm. And it says general yes. as the first option. Mm -hmm. Now, basic is the name. Microsoft, everything. So they asked us to set up the network. So can we go to the network tab? How many network is activated? Four. No? One. One. If you check number two, it's not enabled. Number three, it's not enabled. Number four, it's not enabled. But we have four slots. Meaning we have a primary network adapter, which was the one we start with by default, and we have three expansion slots that we can add on the computer for expanding our network adapters. Does it make sense? Yes. But follow me. The question was three network adapters needs to be available on the computer. One, two of them should be able to connect to the external network, meaning the way the host computer connects to the wireless router, your virtual machine, those two network adapters should be able to connect to those external computers. But one of the network adapters should not be able to go out. It should only be able to communicate within the virtual machines on the virtual manager environment, or the virtual environment. Meaning it should not go out. It should only communicate with other fellow virtual machines within the environment. Yes.
just, uh, just to see if I understand. Um, so the two network adapters, yeah, that must run. What was it? The one network adapter must run to the external. Mm. Meaning, mm. Was it, is it two? Two, 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 two of the network adapters should be able to go out, yeah. and one of them should only be able to communicate within mm. the okay. virtual environment. So those going, to, those going out, is it uh, like, for an example, it connects when I switch on my, my laptop. Does it connect? Does the virtual machines network connect automatically? No, you have to on the you have to open the virtual machine program, start your virtual machine. When it has boot up the operating system, the network adapters are valuable. It will use, of course, it will use your 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 physical network adapter. Yeah, physical yeah. To, connect to, to connect to the external network adapter. That is when we connected externally. Externally, yeah. Yes. And when it's in, Internally, it's just within the virtual machine. So I have to connect it inside of the virtual machine. Inside. That's what we're doing now. That's what we're going to set up now. Right. So since we have four network adapters, we're asked to select three. So the first one is checked. Can we go to the second one? We'll check it. Can we go to the third one? We'll check it. Have we checked all of them? Yes. But then you see... When you check the network adapters, it will tell you who is this network adapter attached to. Mm. Now, by default, it says NAT. In NAT, right? Mm. But actually, the network adapter should be, at, the first one should be attached to what? Yes. The, bridge. the bridge. Remember, we have two network adapters that need to go out, right? Mm. So the first one should be bridged adapter. Did you see the name of the bridge adapter? Yes. Automatically it picks up your local wireless what? Ah, adapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's bridged. Mm. Bridge means you're going out. Mm. So adapter one is, is bridged and it goes out. Yes. Now let's say for example we select internal network, mm. which was one of the one adapter. So if I select internal network, did you see anything like wireless or any local network adapter there anymore? No. 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 It's Internal because it only works internal, meaning it will only work within the virtual machine environment. Your host does not know what he's doing, he does not know what your host is doing. Yes. But if you put the bridge adapter, your hosts and the virtual machine will be able to communicate with one another. Ah. Where is bridge adapter? Which we were asked to make sure two of them are exactly what? Like that. So we'll select the first one, we go to the second one. So the second one must be bridge. And make sure your wireless adapter is select, yep. selected. Yep. Then we go to the third one. The third one will not be what? Internal. 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 Are we together? Yes. Okay. That is sorted out. Internal. The next step is for the storage. storage. We're asked to add another additional IDE mm -hmm. and a SATA drive, but we should make sure that the SATA drive is a solid state. Okay, so... So next we must only have three adapters. So adapter four is not available. That's why it's unchecked. Okay. Yeah. So we go to we go to storage now. If you notice correctly, we have what IDE. So our motherboard is only having the IDE controller. You guys remember the controller, right? So we need to add a SATA controller if we have to add a SATA hard drive. Are we together? So how do you add a controller? Now, if you come to the bottom here, did you see here it says attachment? Yes. Did you see here it says, um, if you bring your mouse, it says controller. Yes. Did you see here it says uh, remove controller? Yes. If you come here, it says add what? New attachment. Add DVD or CD disk. If you come here, it says add what? A hard disk. That is because we are currently attached to what? IDE. So, but in this case, we need to add a new what? controller. So let's come down to the box here and we say add a new attachment. Remember ATA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advanced Technology. attachment. So that's what we added. So we we'll click on add now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, not the IDE. Come to this side. This controller. this one. Yeah, controller. The second one, huh? Did you see SATA? Yes. Okay, click on SATA. Okay, we were asked to add a SATA hard drive, right? Yes. So let's go now. It was not a CD, it was a hard drive, which is the second one. So we we'll click on hard drive. Of course, it's not an existing, we we'll to create what? A new one. So we'll click a new disk. We we'll say VDI. We we'll click continue. 
we say fixed and we click continue on next here we type 2 gig 2 gig then we come here and give it a name you see by default it says new virtual disk 1 yeah. you can also come here and give it your own name are you getting me that's why I say please type the name of the virtual hard drive file into the box below so we can come here and says SATA 1 just like the way I've written it SATA 1 Huh? SATA 1. Have you written it? <laughs> so we click on create. SATA 1. Yeah, SATA on the finding. SATA 1. Then you create. <laughs> yeah, it's, gonna, it's not going to take much time. It's just 2 gigs. Okay. We've added a SATA already. Yeah. It will show SATA 1 VDR. Yes. Now, we were, we, remember, we were asked, can I have one class? We were asked to make sure the SATA drive is a solid state drive. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's a feature in the virtual machine that allows you to configure a drive to be a solid state. So how do you go to, how do you do that? You select, you select the drive, which is SATA 1, select it. A solid state. You select the drive. Can you see the drive here? Yeah. Yes. Did you see the option for solid state drive? Yes. Now you check that button. Now you notice that it says the disk is on SATA port 0. Yes, sir. Meaning you only have one SATA drive. If you add another SATA, you see how many you can take. Up to how many? 20 what? 29. 20 what? 9. Yes. 29. That's the list of drives you can add on the SATA connector. Okay, if you come to the IDE drive, if you select the IDE drive, you can also make it solid state as well. But we don't want to do that. We are also asked to add another IDE. So we, whenever you want to add a drive to a particular controller, you must select the controller itself, which is IDE. If you were asked to add a SCSI, you can also come to the controller. Did you see SCSI there? Yes. Then you add a SCSI controller. Then you add the drive on the SCSI. Just like we have the SCSI connector as well. That also uses a terminator and a SCSI ID. Mm -hmm. We are trying to make something that is physically seen to be virtually implemented. That is what they call virtual machine. Mm -hmm. All these things we're doing, it's like a normal real computer. By the time we load our operating system, which is a part two of, our, of this book we're doing, then we'll start doing the installation. That is the other aspect I'll also talk about. So let's say, for example, we are to add. Uh, we are asked to add another IDE drive. So we come to IDE. We say uh, add the hard disk. Create a new one. VDI. Continue. Fixed. Continue. We'll call it an IDE one, and we we'll call it one gig. Yes, just one. We we'll click create. Yeah, that's just a few seconds mm. for those using machines. <laughs> that's it. So I have the sales department VDI, which is the primary disk. I have another disk, IDE1, which is a 1 gig. You can see there, 1 gig, huh? It's a fixed storage. So guys, that is how to configure the storage on the virtual machine. Add, and you can also remove as well. You can just select it. You see the minus sign here? Yeah, yeah. You can also remove it and attach a new one okay. if it was a mistake. Okay, so by deleting, if I have information saved on that hard, everything is gone. Everything is gone. Yeah. But this, this one does not delete it. This only just removes the drive the from the computer. But on your file, your file on the folder on your computer system, that virtual machine is still there. The virtual hard drive is still there. Oh, okay. So you can connect it later on. It's just like removing a hard drive from a computer, putting a new one, then you back it up, then you put the other drive, then you copy from that to the new one. So the next step I want to do is the boot. Can we go to system? Did you see the boot there? Yeah. Now, we were asked to make sure that the network is the first boot, mm -hmm. followed by what? The CD-ROM or DVD, mm -hmm. and followed by what? 
the hard drive. These are the only three boot devices. So because of best practice, I want to make sure I, I uh, uncheck everything. Then I start with the, the, the network. You see the button on the side? There's a button on the side that says move. So move, select the network and you move. One, two, three. Yeah, you just select the button and it pushes it up. Then the next one is the CD-ROM. And the last one is the hard drive. So you move. So you have them on the same sequence. Then you now tick network, CD-ROM, and hard drive. You go to systems. Then you go to the boot. That is exactly what I'm doing. The way are you lost? Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't check unnecessary things. Check only what that is asked is asked of you. That's it, guys. And we have basically just configured the computer to be boot sequence, network, CD-ROM, hard drive. We've gone to the hard uh, storage. We've ensured that we have two IDE drives based on the spec, a SATA drive that is also a solid state, mm -hmm. added the controller called the SATA, add the disk and all the requirements, and you click OK. When you come in here, you see everything has changed as well. Yes. The adapter has changed. Yeah. The storage has changed. Your boot sequence has also changed. Okay. That is all, guys.